We continue as we live in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I ask that we observe a moment of silence for reflection and self-examination. Most merciful God, we confess that we are held captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us now join together in praying the prayer for this fifth Sunday in the Pentecost season. Together we pray, God of glory, Father of love, peace comes from you alone. Send us as peacemakers and witnesses to your kingdom and fill our hearts with joy in your promises of salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our reading for this fifth Sunday in the Pentecost season, it comes from the book of Zechariah, verses 9 through 12. Hear the words of Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you triumphant, and if victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. Here ends our first reading. Our Holy Gospel. 
It comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, the 11th chapter, verses 6 to 19 and 25 to 30. Jesus again is trying to share with his disciples about what is important, about what it is that he's talking about and preaching about. Jesus said, But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that same time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Father chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of our Lord. For the children's sermon this morning, through our Gospel today, Jesus says, it's a good thing that you didn't give this message to the wise. We'll talk about more of that in the sermon. But he talks about infants and he talks about the realities of what we are trying to believe. For us as children of God, regardless of age, there's a song that is, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. It's one of those simple songs that, that has been so much a part of my life and so much a part of the lives of, of all that have been hearing and believing in that promise of God is that it becomes so much a part of us that we don't even realize that it is unique and that it hasn't always been. That wonderful song actually came from a poem that was part of a novel. How's this one? 160 years ago, 160 years. And that poem in the novel was given to a child that was sick and dying. But that was the comfort that needed to be done. Two years later, in 1862, again, 158 years ago, somebody set that poem to music. And that's what we have today is Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. So wonderful, so simple, yet so powerful. In that one line, we get a chance to understand what it is to be a child of God. We get a chance to, be, to understand that the promise is for all of us. <laughs> We're just kids. We're just kids in God's kingdom. And Jesus acknowledges us and says, you are mine. Let us pray. Almighty God, be with the young people, Lord, who hear the words. Help them to know that regardless about what happens, that you continue to love and care and give us the encouragement that we need always. Help us and keep us safe, O oh Lord, in your gracious, loving arms. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each heart here who hears my voice and sees this sermon be pleasing and acceptable. In your sight we do pray. Amen. Grace to you in peace from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus who is the Christ, the risen Son of God. Amen. This weekend, our nation celebrates our Independence Day. We celebrate that sense of freedom, that sense of seeing fireworks, seeing that excitement of not being, in, being told what to do by a nation several thousand miles away. That declaration of our independence is something that we continually look at with a sense of longing and understanding. We see that document, we see the movies, we see the image of those founding fathers signing that document and declaring with one voice our independence. We relish it, we recognize it, and we go, oh, isn't it a good thing? <laughs> we know how much our independence has been curtailed the last several months. And yet somehow, we have that understanding that yes, we are together in God's kingdom and God's place. Our lessons today, one of the things that, that really struck me was in that prophet Je Zechariah, who was giving us the image and you would have to see the foretelling of Jesus coming in to that Palm Sunday of him riding that donkey and coming just as was foretold in Zechariah. But going through all of the other passages of scripture, what struck me most about this passage that I read was that word, we are prisoner, prisoners of hope. Prisoners of hope. But we've just celebrated our independence. How can we even be prisoners? We have celebrated the joy of Jesus coming into our life. How can we understand to be prisoners? Well, as you hear that word from Zechariah, it's one of those where, where our, we can't do anything else. When you are a prisoner, you are chained, you are bound, and you can do nothing else but. You are confined, you're in jail, you're in prison. And Zechariah is saying, we are bound as prisoners of hope. We can't do anything else. I know that in my life is that I have found that if I take one little step to hopelessness, on that road of hopelessness, it's hard to get back. It's hard to have that renewed sense of what it is to hope in the world. We're getting, we're getting frustrated. You know, with the COVID virus, with, with our lives, we want to get them back to what they should be. And one of the things is, is that it causes a sense of anxiety that allows us to take and seep and become people who we do not want to be. We become those angry people, the ones that continue to take and perhaps look at someone not wearing a mask and going, how can you endanger our life? But the thing is, is that we need to understand that we are those prisoners of a hopeful world so that we can understand that God continues to be in and amongst and dwell us. And that's something that is difficult to grasp. <laughs> Jesus knew that. In fact, our gospel today is almost comical because it, it basically lays out the situation 2,000 years ago, where Jesus is trying to get his message across about the love, care, and compassion of God, and he basically looks to public opinion and says, look what they say about John. Heck, 
He's out there in the wilderness. They called him a crackpot full of demons. Here's Jesus. He's taking and eating with people who are in need. He must be a drunkard. But Jesus knew that the promise that he had, the message that he gave as that son of God, was for those who could hear it. He said, basically, God, thank you. Father, thank you for giving this message to those who need it. In fact, what he said, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. <laughs> Isn't that great? You spend your entire life trying to get educated about what it is to follow Jesus, what it is to be a pastor, what it is to read all the books and the commentaries and all of that understanding about what it is. And Jesus says, hey, it's the infants. It's not the scholars. It's not those should, that have spent their lives in the midst of the promise, they're not some kind of elite. In fact, Jesus goes the opposite and gives thanks for those common people, the common people who really need to hear his message. Yeah, that's it. That's why when we talk about Jesus loves me, this I know for the Bible tells me so, that's enough. Isn't that enough? No, we got to figure out. We have to analyze. We have to write libraries of commentaries to try to figure out what Jesus is trying to say. And in our education and in our understanding of that development, we think we've got the answer because we've proven it. We have shown it to be true. We have analytically did one, two, three, A, B, C, and proven how Jesus literally loves and cares for us as that Son of God. And here's the thing. You know, Jesus is just laughing at us and says, don't go down that path. I've said it before, but I've had a seminary professor a seminary professor who has dedicated his life to trying to examine, to look, and to realize the life ambition of the Bible. He says in his class that he has made a list of all of the questions that he wants to ask God and Jesus when he dies. He's got this list. And he confessed that list and he said, here's the thing. I know full well that none of those questions are ever going to matter because of the love that God has for us that we cannot fathom, we cannot understand. As much as we want to, as much as we try, as much as we strive, the thing is God has claimed us and has made that relationship with us. God's made it. Not us. His promise is simple. Hmm. His invitation is simple. He says these words. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We need that word. We need it so desperately that we forget that first part. 
that says, come to me. In our isolation, in our apartness, and even in going out with our masks on so that we don't e are able to take and communicate by a smile or a voice with those who are around us, we have to be reminded that Jesus is there. He promises to be there in the midst of all that we have and all that we are. Because he is acknowledged as our Lord and our Savior. Today, as we hear from Zechariah, we are prisoners of hope. We can do no other because we have a hope in our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for us, who rose from the dead, and yes, in the midst of our turmoil and upsetness, what is the status quo? We have that hope because we can do no other. We have been chained. And yes, our country celebrates its independence. <laughs> our independence. Yet we realize how dependent we really are on one another, our dependence on a God who loves us, our understanding of something that is so beyond our reality that we can only hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. In that promise, celebrate that you are a prisoner of the hope and love and care and faith God has given you. Amen. Almighty God, I just pray that you be with all those who are in need this day. I pray that you continue to take and realize the joy and the joy that we have in living in that hope that you provide. We do this and know this and believe this because of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmonies of liberty let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies let it resound loud as the rolling sea Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rise. march on till victory is won. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He
he descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I am asking that we now take a moment to consider the Holy Sacrament of Holy Communion, that of which God's grace comes to us in a very tangible and real way in the risen body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is on the night in which he was betrayed that he took bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat this is my body, given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. And then again, after the supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. When we spend time in remembrance of this incredible gift that God gives to us, May the Lord come and touch you in real and tangible ways throughout this week in the many blessings he bestows upon you, your family, and us as God's people. I ask that we now join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you in favor and give you God's peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>